Dialogue makes discourse fun. By batting around a difficult concept between fictional characters, you can make that concept more transparent. For example, William Butler Yeats's poem, For Anne Gregory, touches on one of the most fundamental problems of existence in the guise of a boy flirting with a girl. Never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey-colored ramparts at your ear love you for yourself alone and not your scoffs at the notion that a superficial feature like her hair could be mistaken for her true self. But I can get a hair dye and set such color there. Brown or black or carrot, that young man in despair. Using one of the oldest tricks in the book, the boy has the last word. I heard an old religious man, but yesternight declare that he had found a text to prove that only God, my dear. short poem grapples with a profound metaphysical question. What do our perceptions have to do with the true nature of things? One of the oldest surviving texts on this subject is also a poem and also a dialogue. Written by Parmenides around 500 BC, its characters are an unnamed narrator and an unidentified goddess. Welcome, O oh youth! Here you will learn everything, everything, everything. What the goddess has to tell us will be revealed in the two parts of the poem. Part one, the way of truth, and part two, the way of seeming. The poem begins with the narrator in the middle of a fantastical chariot ride. The mares that carry me kept carrying me. From my 
because this poem survives only in fragments, some of which are corrupted, there are times when the original meaning is unclear. Here, the direction of the journey has been disputed. Are we moving from night to light? Or are we being brought from the world of light into the kingdom of night? Since this is a text which purports to reveal the true nature of reality, it might make more poetic sense to us to think of moving into the light, being enlightened. On the other hand, in many ancient cosmologies, the seat of power is in night, in a mythological underworld. The daughters of the sun, who drive the chariot, obviously have to do with light. But the sun itself hangs in a vast darkness, as does the moon, whose light is an illusion. Goddess has a few things to say about the moon. from part two of the poem, The Way of Seeming. It's only in part one that the goddess tells us the truth. Nothing we perceive with our senses is real. Reality is something whole and eternal. 
There is no change, no movement, no contrast. No yellow hair. No moon. No light. No night.
if our experience of the perceptible world is nothing but an illusion, why does the goddess bother to describe it to us in such detail? Why catalog light, light, sun, moon, stars, earth, life, death, love? If everything we see and hear and taste and touch and feel is nothing but empirical noise, keeping us from contemplation of the one true invisible reality. Because even if our universe is an illusion, it still follows discoverable physical laws? Because even if we're wrong, there is value in investigating what we believe to be true about what we believe to be real? Because it's beautiful. Because it's all we have. Some fragments of this ancient poem are not possible to place with complete confidence in either part one or part two. They get shuffled or reordered depending on the translation. Like the wandering moon, 